any volunteers to subscribe? Okay. We are going to have a, a working session to just carry over things that we didn't get to the last time. We have a bunch of a little backlog of activities. Um, apologies for not getting through all the PRs, but um, we're, as some of you have seen on Slack, still working through scaling our GitHub processes so that we can res be responsive as a group. And um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, so um, please add yourself to the attendance. I will drop the meeting notes in the chat. I have some volunteers to take notes. We have two, for those of you who are new, we have two people take notes so that you don't have to worry about catching every word. They're more just, um, the important things are if people mention links in the chat, um, that we have um, kind of reminders of things and capture action items. But then um, we have two people so people can help each other and one person can feel free to talk. And then the other person can write down what they say. Um, thank you, Jerry and Nadir, if I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, so let's um, just, since we have a lot of things to chat about and we've got a big set of people here, why don't we just launch into check-ins? So we um, also, for the new folks, we, in almost every meeting, except when we have like a presentation, sometimes we um, skip it, but at least every other week we try to have check-ins where we, it's sort of like an agile stand up where you can share what's been going on with you, particularly security related things. Um, it's also a place where, you know, if you're involved in other groups or you just hear about interesting things going on with security, uh, feel free to share because um, we all like to um, hear about where, you know, many of us work in different domains or just hear different things. So um, my name is Sarah Allen. I'll kick it off. I'm uh, one of the co-chairs of the CNCF Special Interest Group on Security. Thank you for coming. Um, we are, as of two weeks ago, we got voted in as an official SIG um, to the CNCF. So some of our processes, we are still wrangling um, and um, we favor action and getting things done. So um, what might look less organized to some of you who might be newer to Agile process is actually an intentional open source process. So we welcome anyone if you see something that like looks odd or is misspelled or you think could be more clear, please make a PR or open an issue. If it's just like, this is confusing and it's in the repo, what the heck's going on here? Um, because we aspire to make it so that this meeting is optional, um, particularly to be friendly to people in other time zones, but also as our group go grows, we can't scale to have everybody present all the time. And we really, really value the people who are scrubbing in and doing deep dives on various things. And we would like to grow to the point where everybody doesn't have to be in every meeting to know what's going on, but we're not quite there yet. So please shout out, ask questions. Thank you, Michael, for calling me out for uh, <laughs> not being responsive. Um, so yeah, that is um, never intentional and we want to be intentional about being inclusive. So. Um, so that's my, um, so basically um, my big contribution for the last week is to create, I broke out a couple of extra chats. Um, so there is now a, um, uh, a channel on Slack for, to coordinate the microsite that Michael's volunteered to do. And he can talk a little bit more about that. And also I got as far as opening up some new issues to help with our triage. I didn't get a point to actually doing PR. So feel free to jump into the triage channel if you have good github foo and um would like to help with just some logistics because we could we would be accelerated if we did that so that's um that's my check-in um let's just go down the list as in the attendance lutz would you chime in of course uh, hi my name is uh, lutz binke i work as a platform engineer for a small fintech startup um, and at the moment i'm basically here to listen and learn and uh, to formulate questions that I might have. So um, I'm the big peeker for everything that's going on. Super, thank you. Michael. 
Um, which one? <laughs> oh, Michael Hasenblas. <laughs> Hasenblas. <laughs> right. I'm looking after container security at AWS. Excellent. And you want to talk about the microsite? Just so Should people might not be following me. First or oh, well, why don't I add that to the agenda? Good idea. Okay. Um, and then next up is Daniel. Um, hi, my name is Daniel Izirov. I'm a security engineer at Adavinta. And uh, hopefully in a week or two, I will help. Uh, with um, security assessment of Falco. I already spoke to uh, Justin Cabos. Great. Jerry, welcome back. Hello. It's been a few meetings since I've been able to join. I'm glad to be back. Um, not a whole lot to report. I've just been working hard on a project uh, for my company. I work as an engineering manager at CyberArk. Um, so yeah, happy to be back and able to help more. Thanks, Jerry. Nadir. Nadir. Hi, uh, so and pronounce it. What, so pronounce your name again, please. Uh, Nadir, I don't think I pronounce it right, so it's fine, <laughs> really. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm a field engineer at VMware. Um, most recently, we've been doing some stuff upstream in Kubernetes around security, CIS benchmarks, been chatting a lot with Liz recently, so that's why I'm here, essentially. Great. Um, Amy. As I come off mute and I'll turn on my camera so you can see my lovely uh, house painting project behind me. Um, I am the program manager at CNCF and my focus is right now being able to help build out SIGs and SIG security is part of that. So hello friends. Thank you, Amy. Sure. Um, and Amy's been working behind the scenes to help us glue together our processes. All the things, yeah. Um, Simar Britt. Hey, uh, this is Samar. This is my second Samar. meeting. Um, and um, yeah, just um, working here, um, listening to other smart people and um, knowing what's going on in the security world. Uh, my my day job involves um, <clears throat> working for Cisco and uh, working on security products. Um, and I like to play around with um, open source uh, security projects. Uh, the one I'm currently working and playing around with is uh, Coop Hunter and Coop Bench uh, by Aqua. So yeah. <laughs> Looking to uh, hear more from other people. Yeah. Super. TK. Uh, yes. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I don't have a lot to report. I missed, I guess, two meetings uh, because somehow I fell through the uh, calendar invite. <laughs> I wasn't sure if everybody was in vacation or <laughs> what was happening, but glad to be back. So I'm going to be uh, trying to catch up as much as I can, I guess, on this and uh, um, hopefully update later. Well, you didn't miss a lot. We've been doing a lot of logistics and hopefully that's reflected in the repo. So um, thank you, glad you're back. Sorry for the hiccup okay. on this process. Justin Capos. Hi, um, I am, I've been working a lot, uh, wrapping things up with a couple of different assessments uh, from both directions as everybody I think is aware. Um, and I am at SCAR actually right now, so I'm only going to be in a little part of this meeting about an automotive conference, um, uh, talking with some of the folks that are using the automotive version of Tough uh, Uptain. So um, I will be mostly out, but wanted to say, at least say hi. Great. I just put a agenda item at the top for that includes you. So um, we'll get to that. Brandon. Brandon. Hey, um, Brandon. I'm um, in IBM Research as a software engineer working on security related stuff. Um, uh, I guess mainly like this week and next week, I'm really going to be preparing for KubeCon China. So um, if, if you're going to be do that, uh, let me know. I think we, we can try and um, figure out something. We can meet for dinner like we did at DockerCon. Uh, I think that would be nice. So yeah, so add if you're if you're at this meeting and you're going to be at KubeCon trying to put your names in the agenda, um, and we should also make an issue for that. Brandon, if there isn't one already, yeah, one? I'll I'll get on that. And yeah, paste it in so that people who are remote can okay join in. Leonardo, hello, hello everyone. Uh, I'm one of the maintainer of Falco, and we're working as you probably already know on the 
security assessment. And since I'm at the conference now in San Jose, really velocity, I just wanted to come here and say hello. I probably not able to stay all the time in this chat, but anyway. Thanks for checking in. And then I think Mark Underwood stepped in above, but I missed you in the check-ins. Mark? Hey, Mark here at Synchrony and Computer Security. Kind of interesting convergence this week between our commercial work developing our complaint list against the container security vendors and the work here. So that's kind of amusing. That'll be interesting to read about. Um, Xavier Stevens, if I'm saying that correctly. Xavier, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, I work for VMware, uh, systems engineer uh, with some security background. Welcome. Currently working on closed source stuff. So I. You can contribute general knowledge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know how that goes. Michael Ducey. Hi, uh, I'm one of the FACO leads. Um, I uh, realized I didn't open an issue on the SIG Security Day, um, but I've talked some more with our internal marketing team. So um, we should probably get on a call, Sarah, with them and, yeah. and kind of start ironing that out. That would be great. Yep. Um, so yeah, so you open up an issue, ping me yep, on Slack if I'm unresponsive. <laughs> Yeah, DM me anytime I'm more responsive to direct ad mentions. Um, so, um, so let's dive in. Um, so anybody who's new, PR yourself as a member, um, your participation either here or um, via um, GitHub counts you as a member. Um, and then I wanted to do a quick update. Uh, uh, we synced up with Liz on the TOC. I, get, I let her know that the in toto assessment is like it's ready, we're just like wrangling the documents and checking our I's and dotting our T's. And she would like to queue up a presentation of the assessment process before queuing up the in toto presentation that includes our assessment. And so um, she's, you know, we, we've got to check with the schedule, but Justin, I wanted to see if you were up for participating in or giving that presentation. Um, which she said maybe, you know, maybe on the 24th, but we can kind of work on the schedule out line, uh, offline, but. Um. Yeah, the, I guess that would be fine. Um, we are slated right now for, to talk, to give a talk in the CNCF TOC meeting on the 9th, on uh, July, July 9th. 9th. Okay, then so the if the 24th works through the schedule, that would be perfect. Uh, then uh, they'll hear about an overview uh, of the process before hearing the outcome of the process. I think I can make it work. It doesn't really work, but I can make it work. Thank you. Or um, at least I can have it and then have someone else get all the credit. One of the two. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think, you know, any of us who've been involved um, can probably give the presentation, but it, since you're stepping up to be the facilitator role, it would be great if you got some of the glory for all this hard work. Um, fabulous. So then um, I wanted to make sure that to have time for the roadmap. Um, I'm going to, we had, um, I, I sort of sought some advice and Dan and JJ and I met who you didn't put yourselves. Oh, uh, can, can I say one more thing while we're on oh, the assessment? Please. Um, so we are uh, about to finish the in toto and really the OPA assessment is also done. I'm just sort of waiting on them to confirm that what we've written is okay. Um, and so both of those processes are, are basically complete, which means that it's time to start the process anew with other projects. And we've had a few projects mentioned and I want to know from the Falco folks since they're here, um, this is a project that we're interested in doing an assessment for. It's uh, you quite, seem quite interested in having an assessment done. Are do you feel that um, in something like a few weeks you would be ready with the assessment document, or do you feel it's going to take a month or more, and therefore we might talk with another community? Hmm. Um. I'm thinking it's going to be a month or more, just given my gut feeling on where we're at with workload for Leo and Lorenzo right now um, and finding them time. And then we have two weeks where we are have the Cure 53 people in, which was something that we kind of already had in flight 
for them to do the security audit. <clears throat> but I'm thinking it, Leo, I'll let you chime in since it's your time, but um, I'm guessing it's gonna be a month or more. If you're having a Cure 53 assessment already done, it makes what we're doing less helpful. Um, it's still useful, it's still a good step, it's still interesting information that other people can look at in a much easier and broader way than what they'll get out of Cure 53. Mm -hmm. But presumably their process will include a lot of this stuff even if it's not documented okay. in the same way based on, it, you know, like we had a Cure 53 assessment of Tough done and they basically said, you know, their report was basically here are the security issues and oh yeah, the design, which, which was, you know, they always have to say they found something, but it was like, well, we found a part of the spec that someone might have implemented wrong, but no one actually did. Um, and yeah, the design looks solid. That was basically what they said. Yeah. So um, that doesn't really help people understand when they should use Tough or how they should use it or what Tough protects against and so on, which is what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, um, if, if you think both are both useful exercises, I'm happy to do we're happy to do both. Um, we were, just to give you a little bit of history, we had, um, we saw that OPA, when they did their presentation around moving into incubation, that they had a security assessment done. And this was back in uh, February, I wanna say, on one of the talk calls. And so I had reached out to Chris uh, to inquire about the security audit that they had done through Cure 53, and, and we kind of spun up that process uh, and now, based upon Cure 53 schedule, they're finally able to uh, get us in their get us in their queue. So we, this was something that we've had in flight for several months now. At this point, um, yeah. It, in a perfect world, we'd have the assessment done first because we could also tell them like these are the three things we want to make sure you look at. Okay. Right. Um, and they to be, you know, they're a great team and maybe they'll see that also but at least having outside people that know the cloud native space maybe in a different way mm -hmm. and a slightly different perspective might also help them to steer their efforts better okay um, but I understand also if if this is going to happen in two weeks and you're on their calendar then that's where you are yeah yeah okay all right well let us know if you want to delay the security assessment then and anything we need to do around that. Well, the, the, the assessment or the Cure 53 audit? No, the assessment. We, yeah, we're, we're ready when you're ready, I think. Um, but just let us know when that is so we get the team together and get the people spun up. Okay. So it's let basically us... the self-assessment that you prepare that kicks off our process. And right now we would rather not do two in parallel. So if you're going to be ready sooner, right, then we can we want to, we've got you queued up. We okay. had earmarked you to be, have the opportunity next, but if gotcha. you're like, it's going to be a while, then we'll put somebody else in the middle. So that's, okay. if you can just. Let me, let, let me and Leo confirm with uh, Lorenzo and we'll have an answer for you. Super. Okay. And then um, anybody on from a candidate project that wants to be next, we've had a few other projects that have been talked about, but does anyone want to speak up for a project? And just for context, um, I'm going to share my screen so that people can follow along with GitHub. Um, we have, we're tracking this um, set of assessments. Can we see that now? No. Just a sec. Um, share. So here I, can you see all, you see issue 167? Yeah, so OPA and Intoto are basically done. Falco, Keycloak, and Harbor um, are, I think, the other projects that we had been eyeing. Um, so anyone from Keycloak or Harbor on? Not directly, but I could put you in touch with those people. Yeah, I think we have an email thread. Um, so, uh, so I think Keycloak, I'm in touch with Harbor. I'm not. Justin, are you already in touch with Harbor? I'm not. Um, I will volunteer. So 
We're also trying to spread out who leads what and who does what. I will volunteer to be involved in the harbor assessment. We want people to do two of these. Um, and then I guess, uh, yeah, we'll try to wrangle people for Falco, Key Cloak, um, Harbor, elsewhere. So there's going to start to be emails or discussions here about um, who. And we've already had, um, you know, some, some people that have been kind enough, like Daniel's been kind enough to volunteer to uh, participate in the Falco assessment and so on. So we can, we can start getting those teams together. I can probably help out with uh, Key Cloak. Or is that already kind of in progress? Okay, yeah. Um, do we want to add names to this ticket? Or how, where do we want to put those? Um, I think that's up to you, Justin, to determine. I, I think but putting like them people, would be fine. Yeah, if you want to, if people want to just chime in on this issue, because I don't, then we don't have to spend time chattering about whose but, GitHub IDs are which. Um, it would be great to uh, just say like, hi, I volunteer, and Michael, if you wouldn't mind, I don't know your GitHub ID to say you have follow up on the Falco scheduling. That would be great. Hey, Sarah, we have what the responsibilities are of individuals that are involved in assessments documented. So we have, what we have is um, in SIG security assessments, we have the, um, this guide. Oh, there we go. Back here, sorry. So we have the project lead, which is the person from the project. Uh-oh, we have a bad link. Um, but it is in the directory, I think. So we have the project lead, who's the person from the project. And if somebody in the meeting would fix that or write a bug, that would be great that I won't forget, or at least put in the notes. Um, that we have a broken link there. But the project lead is the person from the project who identifies and self-identifies and says, I will be the security point person for this security assessment. Um, and then the security reviewers are, this is like what we drafted as what their qualifications are. And then the process identifies there's one lead reviewer which is somebody who has done a security review before. Um, and we are, so we're sort of bootstrapping this by having a bunch of us do the first two reviews. And then the idea is that somebody who was in that team of four that they did the first two reviews is then the lead on one of the next reviews. And then we rotate until we have a big team that has done, had this experience. Does that answer your question, Jerry? It, it, it's Emily actually, but yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, I, it's all right. I, I just wanted to make sure that that was already covered. I know that there's still an outstanding pull request for an update to the security assessment data gathering ticket format that we have, but I, I wasn't sure if that where we were at with getting that stuff kicked off. Yeah, so I think that what is not documented is what we were just talking about, which is like, how do people say I would like to help and how do we, you know, like right now we are tracking which assessments are queued up here, but we don't have yet identified like exactly how do we say who is working on what thing and manage that. So I'm looking to like kind of Justin to codify that, but I think he, you know, like if there's any suggestions, it, you know, about like where do we, like it's just a logistical. Um, I, like, you know, I, I just put a comment on the pull request and I put two things in there as examples. I volunteered myself for something, explained what role I'd have. And I also listed that someone else expressed interest in there. So feel free to do the same. I think we don't have to worry, you know, we're, we're gonna end up with somewhere between six to eight little comments under here. And so it's not gonna be hard for us to aggregate. If we had a thousand people wanting to chime in, we might need a more formal voting process or something, but yeah, just just add a comment, just pop into the issue, add a comment. And this is the issue you're talking about, issue 176, pull request 182? Uh, 167. Um, no, uh, sorry, uh, the, um, not not the pull request, but the the issue. Oh, I see, okay. So the this is the issue. Issue 167.
Okay, so this is, yeah, so chiming in here to say yep. that what, who's willing to help. So I volunteered, uh, and I volunteered someone else who reached out to me, and then I'm imagining that others like Brandon will go and just comment on there also and say, hey, I want to be on Keycloak and whatever else. All right, sounds great. Does that answer your question, Emily? Yeah, I'll probably um, submit another ticket and pull request to update some of the docs then. That'd be great, thank you. Beginner eyes or new, fresher eyes are super helpful in making sure that. Sorry, I was okay. just gonna say I logged an issue for the broken links. Thanks, Jerry. It's linked to in the notes. All right. Any other comments, questions on security assessments? Wonderful. So now back to our agenda. So the um, to the TOC updates, we talked about security assessments. Um, so on the roadmap, back to uh, some logistical process stuff. Um, I don't, I don't think I heard Robert here. Robert did some very nice um, suggestions on the roadmap, which actually then kind of caused the like, how are we wrangling this? This roadmap is still the safe working group roadmap that we put together over a year ago when we were just kind of trying to discover the landscape and discover what it is like, put more clear definitions about what do we mean by cloud native security. And from that, we now have personas in the personas and use cases in the repo. We have some draft categories for the landscape. We have had intermittent active discussions about different ways to ratify those. And we had a number of presentations that um, we'll talk a little bit about the microsite, which is going to surface some of um, the, the work that this group has done over the last year and a half. And so actually these sections are really done. And then we I think we have an we have a lot a lot more crisp ideas about what to do that is you know kind of overlapping with sections three and four, and um, since originally putting together this this very high level roadmap, we then also define this governance process, and I want to kind of go through it at a high level and sort of chat about some ideas that JJ and Dan and I had about like how to move forward with the roadmap following this um, process that we defined. Um, so the process that we defined, so when JJ and Dan and I started this, we really wanted it to be a, um, an opportunity for us all to discover what are common best practices and discover where there are differences without being contentious. So we wanted to not dictate, like any one of us could have like whipped out a security white paper, but none of, we all acknowledge that there may be differing opinions amongst the group and wanted to not get embroiled in some of the things that we'd seen happen in other working groups, which is prolonged discussions about what's correct. So instead we said, well, whenever anything's different, we will, when there's, a, when there's debate, we will invite people who have problems and challenges or solutions to present to us and kind of tease out what is actually happening. And that we wanted to allow the, what's important to come from the group itself. And so it's really this kind of allowing what's important to come from the group itself led um, Rachel Myers and JJ to work together on this governance model where we define this process, where the idea is that anyone in the group can create an issue and the intent, which we have followed not rigorously, is that, um, but we'd like to follow more rigorously in the future, is that that issue where you outline the problem to be solved and what's gonna be the impact of our, as a group solving that problem and what's the scope of the work to figure this out and then rather than just working on it to bring it to the group and be like, okay, I, I'd like to collaborate on this. And then we can talk about it where we can say like, this isn't really a cloud native thing. It's an interesting security thing, but not us, right? Or we can say like, oh, a whole bunch of people are interested in this and let's ha have it be a group thing. And um, 
And so, and the key thing that we wanted to make sure that we do um, is to have a definition of done. How do we know that this thing is done? And we, you know, we sort of discovered this over time where we're like, okay, we're going to this landscape thing. Like when, how do, when do we check it in? And, you know, who's the arbiter of truth? And so having done some of these activities, we realized that the more that we can upfront say, I'm volunteering to do a thing and this is how it comes to a close, even if what I'm doing is the first phase of a thing or a draft of a thing or whatever, um, so that people can um, kind of more independently go forth with a small group. And then um, as we um, have formalized our group as part of the CNCF, now as co-chairs, we're really um, uh, like representatives of the TOC where we are looking to um, do the work of technical oversight of the Cloud Native Foundation projects. And so we want to kind of, we want to, to have, to kind of trickle down that, you know, um, sort of, it's a two-way authority. It's both there kind of ask, delegating things to us and asking us to shepherd this understanding of Cloud Native security. And then also we, act as, um, you know, we figure it, we communicate with our TOC liaisons and then they decide when things need to be brought up to the wider TOC. And what I'm seeing with the technical oversight committee meetings, which I think is really great, is a lot of people are participating in those meetings because they're a great forum to learn about different projects and what's going on in the cloud native community. So it's not just these group of people that's the technical oversight committee, but that forum of having kind of a clearinghouse for what is hot and what is important and what is critical to get done to grow the cloud native ecosystem. So, um, so the, um, so then we have this process where, okay, a chair or technical lead right now, we don't have any technical leads, but we wanted to kind of bootstrap this process. And so all the co-chairs are acting as technical leads right now. Um, so one of us will take responsibility, which means that we're kind of double checking that once started, this thing is going to finish or, along with whoever takes this initiative, the responsibility for if it's languishing, we either recruit new people to take it over or decide we're gonna just close it for an hour, you know, make it inactive so that the group is actually working on things that everybody's working on and there isn't a lot of clutter, which there is right now, but that's why we're trying to follow the process more. And so then there's a proposal and then we either accept it or close it. Um, and I think we could refine this a little more to be like, well, maybe things can float as proposals for a while, right? Maybe we queue them up. And so the idea is really that like, we have these proposals and then we as a group decide to how to queue things up in the roadmap and that there's a lot of things that are work in progress right now that aren't necessarily visible to the whole group. We've been talking a lot about security assessments, but that's not the only thing going on. And then other things have less structure to them. So we thought we could follow this structure and catalog what's happening. And then as a group, we can say, okay, there's other proposals. Maybe there's something that was started last year that's languishing that is less important than some new proposal or, um, or what have you and create more visibility and organize it in a roadmap. And so then um, I've sort of talked a little bit about this sort of active projects, right? To just, you know, like, we're trying to formalize how we track these things, make it visible. And then, um, and that generally we, um, we, should, we keep working on things until there's a consensus, like I talked about, like, you know, we wrote down a process for a vote, but generally we've been able to come to a, cons like we've been a re resolve objections and so forth um, without doing that kind of a formal vote um, because particularly in the domain of security, I think it's high value to explain. If there's a dissenting voice that feels like things should be different, I think it's upon us to explain why that's not a security flaw in whatever thing we're doing that somebody is dissenting, but um, at least in generally in coming to agreement and how to explain a difference that has historically resolved differences. But we have the vote here just in case, you know, something comes up and we can't come to agreement. Um, so, um, so that's the process. Let me just pause a minute to see if there are questions about this process or comments.
So, uh, Sarah, is this uh, are these proposals basically as a proposals for security solutions, or are these actually identifying some security issues that we need to address as a part of the milestones on the roadmap? So these are um, these are basically anything that is like the work of the group, right? Like if it, it is, this would be, I think, so these almost are every issue that is, yeah. So I, I'm not like anything that's on the road. So basically the proposal that um, JJ came up with that I really liked is that anything on the roadmap should be a proposal or a request for a proposal, right? If we don't have a proposal now and we're like, we've talked about doing this, we really want to do it. We don't have a proposal. Then it would be like we, at this point in the roadmap, we would like a proposal to do this, whatever it is. Um, and that there might be some things that are proposals that don't make it onto the roadmap because we don't have bandwidth for it. Um, and then we can, as we get further through the roadmap, then that gives space for these proposals. Because we don't, we, as a group, we want to make sure that we have, um, we either have a structure like the security assessments where we're like, okay, we don't need the whole group to meet and review every security assessment. We have a process where we make sure that there's a subgroup that's reviewing each other and everybody has an opportunity for it to review. Some things can go under that kind of a structure, but then other things that are less repeatable, maybe we feel like we need to have working group meetings. And so there's a certain throughput that we have an opportunity to have into, you know, until unless we can kind of create a structure around it. Does that make sense? And uh, so this probably leads me to believe then we are also adjusting the scope of this whole SIG group as we consider the different proposals, right? The scope is not hard bounded at this very moment. Is that true? Well, so yes, yeah, so the scope is really defined in our charter, right? Which we can amend if it's not quite correct, but we went through a bunch of wordsmithing on this, which is very broad. Right. 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 Charter is, is basically like we want to make things safe in cloud things, cloudland, to be very right. precise. So, right. And so that could be we could all work full time on this and not get done ever. So so yeah. So the scope's really right. broad, but we want to sequence so, things so we're completing stuff. So yeah. So let me give you an example that I came across, and I was I posted that I think to the community a couple of weeks ago or maybe a week ago about the edge that is being, uh, you know, uh, on many people's mind, but has not been quite uh, an established platform at this moment, if I say so. And I know in the LF, meaning Linux Foundation, that has the uh, a project called LF Edge. And I was trying to bring that to our attention, but you know, when I talked to some of their reps in a conference recently, they have indicated that they have not actually addressed the security issue of the edge. And since they are our, you know, kind of a sister organization, I guess within the CNCF uh, or the within the LF rather Linux Foundation, I wonder if there is, you know, more people here would consider bringing in the security issue of the edge in this scope in some time in the future in the roadmap or something, or is this totally inappropriate? I was trying to get some, uh, you know, s some feeling from the community here to see if uh, this is something we should be considering or should not be considering. So I think like um, I'm, I think that would be like a really interesting topic to talk about. And like, that's where, Having so there's a couple of different ways to approach that kind of a question, and I, I'm going to treat it as a category um, because we're focusing on process this week, um, which is that we have some activities like we want to make a general white paper on cloud native security, and we've said that that we define that as inclusive of privacy and policy and a number of concerns, which all affect security, right, but are sort of separate domains. Um, and in the process of that white paper, we hope to more clearly describe what we mean by cloud native security. And that will help with those bounds. So it could fall into there where we're like, 
let's have a paragraph on the edge and what does it mean? And we can discuss whether it's included or excluded, right? So some of questions like that could be addressed within something we're planning on doing. Um, and the other thing is we could just have a proposal for a discussion like or a proposal for a presentation where we say so one of these edge vendors um, or somebody who has a deployment, which is a cloud deployment that includes edge concerns, gives a presentation of what they're talking about. And then we as a community learn more about what we as an industry mean by edge. Because I that for that particular issue, I have heard it defined as cloud and this is the first time I've actually heard it defined as not cloud. So like, I think it, it deserves its own like sort of exploration. Um, but we as a community need to allocate some time periodically to like, what are the bounds of what do we mean by cloud native? Um, which we spend a lot of time to come up with this charter, but I think that the cloud is still evolving. So um, right. is that, does that answer your question enough for now? <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I get the sentiment here. If that's uh, that's, I think a valid, um, you know, just valid, I guess, comment there because I don't think the the world knows exactly where the cloud ends and where the edge begins. So it's kind of <laughs> one of those things. But I wonder, uh, would it be appropriate for us to connect with this edge community within the Linux Foundation and ask them if they would be interested in providing some presentation to our sessions or anything like that? How do you feel about it? Well, I think that that's where, like, what, what, what I want to do with this roadmap exercise is get more visibility into, like, what's our backlog? And okay. um, I know we have a couple of, like, you know, somebody who attended KubeCon um, volunteered to present their deployment as a use case. That's the only one springing to mind, but I want to make sure that we don't have that we would, would be able to say we're going to have a gap in our meeting agenda in August or something. Whereas right now, right this second, we don't have that forecast because we're in the mid, we we don't haven't formalized our roadmap and taken a look at it. So I think the particular outreach, let's wait a few weeks until we have like our 2019 mapped out. And then we can be like, where are the gaps? And, and then we can discuss like, is, does it feel like we should have a breakout group for that? Or do we want to queue it up for when there's a hole in the presentation schedule? Does that make sense? So, yeah, sounds good. Nice. Okay, thanks. great. And thanks for bringing that up. Do I, um, so, so basically the idea is that we refactor this roadmap so that, that, there is, that we start with a PR or a Google Doc that is a list of proposals that we like dig through our open issues that Brandon has so nicely curated and labeled. And we figure out which ones are actually in progress from people who've been around for a while. And we make sure that they're in this proposal format. And then we're like, this is what our roadmap would be if we didn't intervene, because this is what people are already working on and then have a discussion so that we are starting from um, creating visibility into what people are working on. And then there might be some things that we people want to put more effort into if they actually knew they were happening. And then other things which, um, you know, like seem urgent. Um, and then we can also talk about like, do we want to make sure we have a presentation once a month or, you know, do we want to have more breakout meetings if there's more that people have enthusiasm for doing that don't fit in a weekly meeting cadence. I mean, we already have a breakout group for policy that we're working on having more better cross times on communication about. Um, so what if, and then with that, I was thinking that maybe we refactor this so that it's like at the bottom and a list of accomplishments so that we have like a little history of like, oh, look at what we've already done so that new folks can see that we've done some things. Um, and then as we go through the roadmap in the future, we'll be able to take things and move them from the roadmap into the accomplishments and we'll have kind of a running thing. What do people think? Is, do you think that would work? Do you have better ideas? Suggestions? It sounds like you're wanting to turn the roadmap into a project schedule that we can track 
epics and initiatives that the work is, that the group is working on and then show completion against those items right yeah pretty much and also just make the roadmap more concrete right it's but it's okay if the roadmap has things that aren't yet written up as issues right um but that it would evolve into something that creates transparency that isn't just a static roadmap that becomes obsolete until we have a meeting about it got it is there a vetting process for items that become issues that and we need to evaluate getting them onto the roadmap um i think what what i'm proposing is that this moment in time this next and weeks of time be a, a thing where we actually create a process for vetting things and we follow the pro we have a process defined right but we haven't really exercised it We've done it informally we'll talk about things we'll be like oh yeah let's do that um and then they those things have issues but we we do not we're not sort of strictly following this like um you know the uh where i, I had it up before the like the governance process and as reflected in like if you look at the issues they don't all have the things that are described here which has yeah. caused like some of them they're just old before this existed right and some of them we just didn't do and then we've run into like okay so how are we wrapping this thing up right awkwardness and so basically it would be like let's reverse engineer and make sure that everything in process like is actually following our documented process and then sort of see where we're at and also be we'll loop in liz and joe who are toc liaisons so that if the TOC wants to say, okay, this is what you're doing, wait a second, what about this thing, right? right. Um, so that, you know, everybody in the group and the TOC can all give feedback and see what we're planning. And then we can also like, if there's a lot of enthusiasm, like I said, that for things that don't fit in our roadmap, then we can talk about rejiggering our structure to make that work. Okay, right. that makes sense. I'm game for that. Awesome. Other folks? Looks good to me. Um, so um, I think, so then I'd propose the next steps is that um, me or somebody opens a issue for um, refactoring, just refactoring the roadmap to have the what's done. Um, maybe somebody who's been around for a while can um, help that, you know, um, but we have an issue to say that we're going to do that. And then um, that the triage team, which anybody is welcome to join that channel and help. Um, the, uh, the next step is to actually document this triage role. So we're actually like, this is, I think I put this at the next. Yeah. So we have, we have a little logistical challenge um where what we want to do what we just what we talked about doing but we haven't documented is that we would have people who can who have who, who tag issues and like basically clean up the github issues and look at things that are coming in and you know make comments and like kind of help with the influx of issues and prs and review things and tag things and curate them in advance of meetings and kind of raise things to be talked about um, and so uh, Brandon um, volunteered to do that generally and Justin's focusing on things that are related to the security assessment and Howard um, is focusing on things related to policy. And so um, we have in theory um, and that the idea is that they would by their role, we thought we could actually have a GitHub permission that allowed that level of um, authority, right, without full access to the repo. Turns out that's not really a thing. So, um, so what we have is, um, I'm Ultrasaurus, um, me and JJ, and I, Dan is just a, ought to be on this list, are admins of the repo. And then Justin, Brandon, and Howard have full right access, which is more than their roles re uh, allow for. But then I propose that we just like, let's trust them. And if like somebody in this triage role ends up doing something, if they're a bad actor, we'll just remove them. 
those of you who know GitHub also realize that anybody with push access can actually make themselves an admin and do all sorts of things. But, um, but we have enough people with like, you know, copies of this thing that I think I, I tend to like to run open source with like sort of if somebody's been active then you ex extend trust and then you can like always revoke it. So, um, so that seems to, I said that a, many, many weeks ago and nobody's objected. So I'm going with that. Um, so, but I would like to actually, we're having this logistic, but I don't know why Howard can't actually do labels. So we're, we're in a little bit of like debugging this thing. And then, so I want to like write down what this triage role is um, and so we actually write it down and practice it a little while and make sure that GitHub, like all the things are hooked up, um, not to broaden it, but then what we could, you know, like if we, what we could do is, you know, like create more compartments um, where other people sort of shepherd other parts of um, what we're doing. And then um, I went ahead uh, when we were very involved in like sort of setting up the security assessment process and I created this, um, this template. So in GitHub, you can create a template for an issue type. What's nice about this is it automatically assigns the label. So if we have a type of issue that we know that people make the, like, um, and I think I wrote up an issue that we should have a proposal one, right? So proposals are supposed to have X, Y, Z. We make a little template people remember to fill in those things, it automatically gets labeled proposal. So then we sort of kind of streamline this thing. And then um, unfortunately, because we have only one of these, when you go and you create a new issue here, um, which I didn't, it's sort of an unanticipated UI thing. So right now, if you create a new issue, it's sort of just like, oh, all I can do is a security assessment. I didn't quite realize it was gonna show up this way. Um, but the idea is you could like in the future, we would have like a security assessment type of issue. We'd have a proposal type of issue, which hopefully we can link to the process MD. Um, and we could have like a presentation, like if you want to propose a presentation um, and that, and those can be streamlined in terms of creating tags. So, um, so that's, that's just kind of where we are. If um, it would be great if anybody who um, feels like submitting templates and helping us do you, you know, just kind of set up the workflow in GitHub. So that's kind of slowing us down a little bit um, and just ask everybody's patience. Hopefully we can sort that out within the next week. Does that all make sense to everybody? I don't know, I, like not everybody is like lives and breathes GitHub. So I wanted to kind of go through that, especially because we're sort of partially implemented GitHub workflow here. Any questions about the, no question is dumb here. If you have a question, probably somebody else is worrying about it. So please ask questions if you just kind of just have GitHub questions about how we're using this tool. All right. So, um, Michael, can I tap you to talk about the microsite since you have volunteered to spearhead this and mm -hmm. it will use our new triage approach idea. Right. Um... So I'm trying to, to summarize it because we don't really have a lot of time, but the, the, the biggest ask, I guess, is uh, towards CNCF um, around the infrastructure. But at least that is what, what I plan to look after in the first place. Like there are obviously a lot of, um, you know, content related issues. And I, I encourage everyone who wants to contribute to that to jump on the, let me look it up. What is it called? The, um, six security dash web channel. So we have a dedicated channel there. And if you want to, you know, help out or whatever, please, please jump on that channel. And I guess the infrastructure bit is straightforward. Once we have decided where we want to do it, right? Like the, the actual, a place like Natalie 5, for example. Um, there are other things like picking the right Hugo template and, and whatnot. Um, but I guess for now, if I understood you correctly, we want to focus on the content and get something um, minimal up and running soon, or, or like you know, maybe up until next week, and then build it out from there. 
did I capture that correctly, our most recent discussion? Yeah, so we're going to kind of like, we've got a whole bunch of questions open to the CNCF about like, where does this go? And do you have any guidelines? And what's the URL? And like all those things are like, there's different people we're answering those or finding the people, right? And help desk and whatever. So all that's like going to take a week or two. And in parallel, um, the, so the idea is we would start this repo with the presentations that we've had. We, well, they'll be on YouTube. We'll have transcripts. And so there's some, that, you know, in this thread, there's like, some ideas about like, well, what if we had like YAML metadata on the transcripts and, you know, pointed to the video this way. Um, and then uh, Michael, you know, Michael and I are both familiar with this tool static site generator called Hugo that, you know, like just kind of play around with putting the metadata so we have some indexes. And then um, we, uh, we have a volunteer that I have to track down their email who comes more from the marketing curating words side of the house um, who I think who I hope will help us with kind of like you know basically taking content from I figure we we have a lot of content here and our Twitter we have a lot of words that we need to make into like like we could just stick some of this like in my what my dream is that day to day we can just edit markdown in the repo right. and those edits show up on the website as appropriate and, and that does work uh, very, like, yeah, you can exactly do that. So I think the only thing we really need to decide, and I don't know if you want to do that now or probably in, in that uh, dedicated channel there, um, where did we do it? Like in a branch on, on that repo or, or a new repo? And uh, where do we run it? Like, for example, Netlify. And yeah. uh, even if we don't have a beautiful uh, URL right now, uh, you know, it, it has some Netlify, whatever temporary uh, URL, that's also fine. At least it's something that we can look at and say, yep, that's that's how it's supposed to be. And then we could take it from there. At least that would be my my suggestion. Yeah. We have something at least that people can look at and say, yep, that's nice or something's missing. Right. So the idea is that this subgroup um, that Michael is volunteered to lead would um, kind of like work on its own and, and get to some proposal and bring it back to the working group for feedback. And then anybody can chime in asynchronously for feedback in the meantime. Um, but the end that that group would come up with like some sort of plan with checkpoints, right? So we want to have Liz and Joe approve something, but not every PR, right? So the group will come up, the group might just be Michael and me, but everybody's welcome. Come on in, the water's fine. Um, and then the other kind of triage related thing, Michael, is that um, the, where's the issue? The issue that has all the check boxes, Michael would turn into sub issues and with a label exactly. and then volunteer to curate because there's going to be like lots of little issues, right? When, once we get into like making a website and that those, um, we should just label all the same so that they are sort of separate from other things like security assessment things, which are very different character of issue. And so that we'll have like basically sub teams working on labels of like these bigger projects or ongoing things. Like, I think having a web presence and a microsite, um, it will like, like the assert security assessments will periodically have some work associated with them. Right. Um, and, but, the, but unlike the security assessments, which regularly have big bursts of work, <laughs> I, 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 we anticipate the microsite will have a big burst of work and then like not much work until somebody gets right. enthusiastic about creating a new section. And in Sound case- good? People are wondering why we were using labels there. Very simple, because uh, GitHub doesn't allow us to, you know, divide a certain issue into certain tasks. So we, you know, there, there's not you can't like in Jira or whatever have a, an umbrella issue that has all these tasks. So that's why we are using labels there. That's the only reason. Cool. All right. So we have last few minutes. Um, let me see what else is, we didn't get to the container security book. Um, do you want to just mention that and people can chime in? It was on Slack a while ago. Yeah, I, I started the whole thing. And if you want to take a, a look at it, it's essentially community driven. Um, and you know, feel free, a couple of folks have commented on that. I just put it here on, on Slack and, and a link from it from the- Cool, um, and if you would put add a link to the notes, yeah, then people yeah. can chime in on that. Um, 
just have a have a, have a look at it and uh, maybe raise issues on, on GitHub that would be appreciated. And uh, we can talk about it next week. If you want to. And I also wanted to um, call out for volunteers who might who want like if if I could in my dreams I would have a lead who would curate this new roadmap that is a set of proposals and bring it back to the group. So if there is somebody who is willing or excited to do that um, sort of curation and listing, ideally somebody who's been around for a little while, but you know, like it's it's sort of digging through the proposals and. And I'm happy to work with that person if you're newer. Just DM me. Um, because like I could just, it, it would be great to have a little more bandwidth to um, put together that set of things and also just have a, another perspective. But then the idea is that's not a decider group that is just like curating things. And then anybody who has an issue, another thing that if anybody has GitHub foo, I am trying to figure out how to assign what are the, I don't know the GitHub rules why I can assign issues to some people and not others. It doesn't seem to be restricted to people with right access to the repo. And so I'm mystified how you get on that list. So <laughs> uh, you can only assign people if they're a member of the CNCF organization. Oh, so there's people who are org members and repo members. Yeah. Okay. So there might be some way to add somebody as a repo member, like maybe if I add them as read access. So I, I'm going to play around a little bit more because I'd like to be able to assign issues to people without giving them full write access so that we can be a little more like, yes, go forth new person and do a thing um, without like, oh yes, and you can accidentally obliterate our whole repo, like, you know. Um, Usually it's a collaborator in the settings of the repo. You can add people as collaborators and I give them that level of access. Okay. So, um, okay, so it's 11 o'clock. Thank you all for your patience with this um, bookkeeping meeting. Um, really appreciate feedback and, um, and the, we'll see if like we um, try to queue up more of a meeting next time. Um, we have a, um, offline a bunch of uh, different ideas have been proposed for um, things. So, um, so we'll try to get that set up before next week so people know in advance what we're doing at these meetings. So appreciate everybody's patience and participation in curating the repo and um, hang in there and anybody who can scrub it in the next week, huge help. Thanks everybody. Thanks, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. So